major changes in amblyopia therapy, and uh, Dr. Suma will be talking about tackling esotropias in children. Thank you, Dr. Rohit, for giving me this opportunity, and I'm glad to be part of this instruction course. I'll be talking on tackling esotropia. Um, the most common which we see in the clinic is uh, accommodative esotropia. So there are different types, but let us go to case one. This is a four-year-old child presenting with uh, inward deviation of left eye since the age of two years, but he has presented so late. His best corrected visual acuity, unaided visual acuity was 6-9, and the prism bar cover test showed around three, 30 prism diopters, both for distance and near. Cycloplegic refraction has to be done with atropin and nothing else, especially in small children. I would, I would say that it, would, it is recommended to do it in all children before the age of six years. Let us not do shortcuts. So a refraction, we got plus 4.5 both eyes, and it was clearly a case of refractive accommodative isotropia. He was ortho with the glasses. This presents with an onset of around two to three years of age. And uh, amblyopia is not prominent unless hyperopia is anisometropic. So when do we wean off these glasses? Because that's the main question which parents ask us, when do I wean off these glasses? So the weaning, we start at the age of eight years. And lower level of baseline hyperopia, like less than three diopters, we find that uh, okay, we can wean nice. them off much better than uh, Do you consider the contamination uh, by? You should. Um, so uh, any single re re uh, refraction, we reduce to around point, uh, the glasses reduced by 0.75 to 1. Most of these children have a very good binocular potential. So now the new thing, is refractive surgery an option in such children? Because there are a lot of hot topics going on, like let us do ref uh, LASIK in these children. So let's say a child presented from Panipat, a five-year-old, with inverse squinting of both eyes. He had a clear cut just plus 3.5 refraction and in the right eye and plus 4.5 in the left eye. We prescribed him full cycloplegic refraction, gave him the treatment for amblyopia, and he was doing very, she was doing very well. But parents insisted, please remove glasses of my child, though I counseled. What happened? After a few months, the patient presents again in the clinic. They said that they got the LASIK done outside. And the child again came with less vision, had again the squint around 35 prism, both for distance and near. And what do we see on slit lamp? We see on slit lamp that in the right eye, there is a corneal epithelial growth, and in the left eye, there was an irregular flap with corneal haze. And when we do the refraction, we find that there was a very high cylindrical number in the right eye, and the left eye also. So a clear case, which could have been nicely, like we could have just given glasses, and we could have weaned off by the age of eight years. And now she was left with an ectactic cornea in the right eye. She had very high cylindrical number. And along with it, also she had squint, which was same for distance and near. And therefore, and we had to again do a surgery for the squint. This could have been just cured with glasses. And we could have treated her very well with a good binocular potential. So LASIK is a big no. When the deviation is not corrected with glasses, then it is either partially accommodative esotropia if it is more than 15 prism diopters. If there is a near distance disparity, then if it is more than 10, then we look for, we check for high AC by ratio. We do it by the gradient method. And then if it's a high AC by ratio, it is a high AC by ratio isotropia, or we will have if it's a normal AC by ratio, that is less than five. So what in these cases with a high AC by ratio, the treatment is bifocal glasses. Means with the glasses, you find that for distance, it is straight. For near, there is still some amount of isotropia left. So you can just add on a plus three glasses and give the bifocal, which is bisecting the pupillary margin, and we find that they do very well. And we can uh, later on wean off these glasses slowly and slowly. Uh, say after the age of seven or eight, we can wean off even the bifocal, and it is not good to do surgeries in them because we find that later on they go into consecutive exotropia if we operate them very soon. So partially accommodative isotropia when it's equal for distance and year, and with the glasses also, it is more than 15 prism diopters. Remember that to counsel parents that even after the surgery, the parent, the child still needs to wear glasses. So the non-accommodative isotropia, the next topic. So we have with a normal AC by ratio, if there is a difference in distance and near, 
then and it's a normal AC bad ratio, then it is convergence excess type. Now in this, if there's so much of difference, like if it is 30 and 50 for near, then I prefer to do a Farden surgery. If there is less of difference, then we can do a bimedial recession, which is like in between, and small amount of bifocal can be given for the near. So the Farden surgery is where we take a posterior fixation suture at the arc of contact and insert the muscle, the, where you put the posterior fixation suture, and uh, the muscle then uh, has to receive more innovation to do the same movement, and therefore it does it, weakens the muscle. So here you can see that it's around 12 to 13 millimeter from the insertion, you take a posterior fixation suture, like a non-absorbable suture, and we get good effect. But remember that, don't do them in all the cases, because we find that the muscle in front of the posterior fixation suture, when you go back for a reop, you find that it's just a thin fibrotic band, and that muscle has no effect after that. So in high AC bar ratio, if the child is doing well with glasses, or if you, it's better to leave, put them with glasses and not go for any other surgery. So the other, which we see in children, like around six months of age, from birth to six months of age, who present with uh, essential infantile esotropia syndrome, where they have a large deviation and a small refractive error, they have cross fixation. So one is the characteristic is the cross fixation. Like we find that when they have to look with to the left, they fixate with the right eye, and when they have to look with the right, they fixate with the left eye. So this implies that the child has equal vision. Many times we get referral that this is a sixth nerve palsy. Please do the doll's head maneuver and check whether the eye is moving outward. So it is not a sixth nerve palsy. It's very uncommon in this uh, age. It's rare. So it is maybe just an infantile esotropia. And uh, kindly do the doll's head maneuver to rule that out. So the non-surgical treatment for this is first always do an atropin refraction. I do find in the clinic many of us give glasses, small babies plus one, and then we uh, and then the child does not wear the glasses for infantile esotropia. We could give a trial, but don't tell them to continue with the glasses for long periods of time because they require surgery as early as possible. We just give them glasses and then the parents wait till three years and by that time the outcome is not as good as when we could have operated earlier. So you give a trial of glasses, maybe, but correct if it is more than 2 plus 2, 2.5, don't give them when it is a very small refractive error or even if you are giving, check it after some time and see whether it is actually correcting the, refract the squint or not. If it is not, then please advise or refer for surgery. And patch the dominant eye for around four to six hours per day. So that, uh, and check the fixation preference. We want to make it alternating before we go for surgery. So now early surgery is recommended. The, uh, the Cochrane review says that ultra early alignment in four to six months. We do not find them in India at least. Uh, early before 24 months. So we have parents coming to us as early as six to eight months. And it takes time, we do some, we do refraction and then we do the patching. And then we need to operate them as early as possible. So um, when if they may be associated with a B pattern or an A pattern, then we need to touch the obliques. Please do not leave the, uh, leave the child with the oblique overaction and say that the squint is corrected. Cyclic esotropia also is common, is rare, but it is like you see them every alternate day, maybe every 48 hours, but this also requires surgery. Then we have Sientia, other variants like the Sientia syndrome, where you find that the children with esotropia are presenting also along with a manifest nystagmus. This also requires surgery. Then Mobius syndrome, where we find them along with seventh nerve. These are all esotropias with, lateral, with congenital paralysis of the sixth and seventh nerve, and these do require surgery. So we another, have another entity which is becoming quite rampant now, which we find in the clinics. It is acute committent esotropia. We have the swan type, like the monocular occlude, and we find that the squint is manifesting now or the burian franceschi type without any preceding disruption of fusion, and we have the Belchowski type which is associated with myopia. But kindly do always an MRI in these children because it could be also of neurological origin. In the consecutive esotropia we find after surgery, kindly wait for six months, please do not hurry up and perform the surgery again. Do alternate occlusion, give bifocals for near, try basal prisms, and then maybe after six months, if the esotropia and the diplopia persist, then we can proceed for surgery. So the paralytic squints are, we need to know that there could be a six nerve, actually there could be a six nerve palsy, that there, there, there is incompetent strabismus, so it is important to do intraoperatively a forced duction test, rule out whether it is a six nerve palsy or whether it's a restrictive strabismus. 
and the options are the management is a yeah. BRT or an augmented BRT and we find that the Nishida's technique which is now used is useful also for this. So the other type of esotropia is the Duan syndrome. We can get an Duan syndrome, esoduans, the type 1 Duan's. I finished. Could I continue? Yes. No, I have nearly finished. Oh, okay. And uh, so in this, if the FGT is tight, then it is, it is important to do a medial rectus recession. But if you find there is no severe globe retraction, if the FGT is negative, then you can uh, augment it. You can also do a superior rectus transposition to the temporally. So we have a lot of restrictive strabismus also. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Suma. That was a very comprehensive coverage of ESO deviations uh, in children, which is among the largest group of patients we see. So some of the key messages we have, especially for those who have come late, is umbilipath therapy, any age, uh, exciting changes in umbilipath therapy, it should be offered to all. In Dr. Suma's excellent presentation, always give the uh, age-appropriate cycloplegic refraction and correction. It is very, very important before we think of any surgical intervention. So do an age-appropriate cycloplegic refraction. In small children, at least six to seven years, esotropia is presenting first time. We at our center and many places do insist on the atropine ointment as the first in, uh, way to do a ref cycloplegic refraction. It may be a little cumbersome and uncomfortable, but at one time, once in the child's life with esotropia, there must be the uh, knowledge about the basic hyperopia that the child has because we need to uh, remove the latent hyperopia also, which is the stimulus for esotropia in these patients. So we need to give age-appropriate cycloplegic correction and then evaluate the amount of residual deviation and plan for surgery. So that is one of the key messages Dr. Suma gave and that cannot be highlighted enough that that is the first step always assess a child only after that never fear uh, uh, giving the age appropriate cycloplegic refraction we've had children uh, that the first time were refracted and the refractive error was plus six and the the treating doctor felt that plus six first time very heavy very difficult to give the child will not accept and prescribe plus three plus four that defeats the very basic premise on which we have done a, a cycloplegic refraction so uh, give those glasses in the first co itself, ask the parents to get it made almost like an emergency because before the effect of the cycloplegia is removed, we want the glasses to be in place. Once this uh, accommodation comes back, the child will find the glasses giving a blurred image and the child will not accept the glasses. So while the atropine effect is weaning off gradually, the uh, glasses have been, uh, should be given so that the child starts seeing clear through the glasses and the stimulus for accommodation, which is blur, is removed. So there is no blur with the glasses. As the effect of cycloplegia gets um, weaned off, the stimulus for accommodation is not there and therefore the child continues to accept these glasses. And if the child is not accepting later on and the parents come, I usually give atropine ointment once at night for two or three days so that again we generate some amount of cycloplegia and the child is able to accept the glasses again. So, a very key message in esotropia, refractive correction, then plan surgery. Surgery should be planned early as possible uh, in infantile esotropias, immediately following about four to six months and after treatment of umbilipia. We'll now move on to the next.